It'll be a very nice frontal visual of her. Oh, look at that. Seems like we got here just at the right time. Oh, she's got a diker and I think she's trying to reposition it and move it somewhere else so she can carry on feeding on it. Ooh. There are a bit of a few branches in the way but hopefully we'll be able to get around them just a little bit later but let's just let her settle now that there's been a bit of movement all around and we'll be able to, to go around and have another look at her but how amazing <laughs> hello new leopard very happy to meet you she is a stunning individual and looking very full i should say and she's actually she seems to be quite bigger, although it could be the angle that she's in, but I have a feeling she's slightly bigger. Look at those claws, that just that power. And she's doing exactly what Shadow was doing when we saw her the other day with the cub and the steamboat kill. Look how she's taking all of the hair, uh, all of the hair out of the of the skin of the diker just to be able to get to the soft part to the skin and then be able to cut through there and get to do all the meat that because obviously that's what uh, that's what she's interested in. And there went all the hair <laughs> falling down. But if she's not careful, she might even drop this kill. Because it seems like it's hanging just by a little bit of a thread, so to speak. And she's just holding it together all the way up there. Lucky for her, I don't see any hyenas around. So even if she drops the kill, she could just very well go down, fetch it, and then grab it and put it back up on the tree. It's a very long job trying to eat their prey. So if you imagine for a leopard, they spend endless hours trying to hunt. I mean, we've seen Hosanna trying to stalk and hunt for so many times and Shadow and Tandi and all of them. And they do it for quite a while and they're not that successful. Their success rate is probably about maybe 40, 50% if anything. And uh, once they do manage to get the animal down or to bring it down and hunt it now she's actually fed on it she's opened it and now she's taking it all the way up there but her job doesn't just finish there now she's gonna carry on plucking the hair and trying to get to the meat so <laughs> it's quite a long process for them to try and get all the meat and all the nutrients that they need to carry on surviving so I think we we just tend to think that it's the the stock that is the longest part but I think we don't give the, the treatment of the or the preparation of the meal enough consideration just because they also they spend a lot of time taking the hair out taking the stomach out trying to cut through the skin to get to the meaty parts and it is getting a bit of a it's a bit of a strong view very raw so if you are not entirely comfortable with what we are watching please do look away um, this is the way our leopard survive and it's this is why it's it's nature and it's a very raw visual of what it is and on the one hand obviously we are very happy that she's able to feed because, but unfortunately for everything that lives something else dies <laughs> that's very gloomy sensor <laughs> i think maybe she's managed to position it a little bit better on the tree and it seems like she's got it safe up there Cheryl, um, you are wondering how old this leopard is. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm sure a lot of viewers will be able to help us out using the hashtag Safari Life. But if I am not mistaken, she is the previous litter to Tamba. So I'm going to guess around two or three if she is actually the one that the, the, the litter previous to Tamba. Otherwise, I could potentially be very, very, very wrong. Um, but like I said, if anyone wants to help out and let us know, I am more than happy to learn about a new leopard that obviously other people have been following for for a while longer than what I have and that is the beauty of this community that we have seems like she's still quite a, she's got a lot of the meat still left around there especially in the hind quarters are you gonna take it up Oop. yeah that's she's on a dead marula so parts of the bark are falling down as she moves around so I think maybe that's why she's trying to move it just to make sure that she's got a bit of a better grip and the bark doesn't fall with her and the kill I'm gonna wait for this car to stop moving and maybe we'll try to get a bit of another look although if she raises her head it's quite nice because then we've got full on view of her exactly like this thank you very kind of you hmm. 
very clever leopard putting your kill all the way up there. So in areas where there's a lot of pressure from other predators, it's particularly um, hyenas, the leopards, or most of the leopards, although Shadow's a bit of a um, special case, they tend to put their kills on top of the trees because pretty, mu pretty much nothing else will get to them. So you see, <laughs> she's hiding actually quite well on a very dark day like today. If you look from a distance and the way her, the, the color of her skin and the kill that she's got there, it's pretty much impossible to know that she's actually here. So luckily the guys managed to find her this morning and now we get to spend some time with her in the evening. Woohoo! <laughs> Beautiful. Take care, you're wondering if leopards open the skin of their prey using their claws or their skin. Well, in this case, if you're wondering, because you, we saw that she had her paws on top, that uh, the paws are mainly just to grip, to make sure that the kill doesn't fall. But to open or to cut through the skin, they actually use their teeth. Particularly the back teeth, because the way that the teeth of a, of a leopard are put in their mouth is the same as a domestic cat or a duck, and it, it's actually that whole uh, position, and it's called carnation shear, and it allows the, the leopard to cut through the skin almost as if its teeth were scissors. So that's why you see that the hell tilts down on the side and she's using the molars at the back to just cut open that skin and be able to get through the meat. So they they use their mouth rather than their than their claws to try and open it up. Raisa, James and Hini, you all say that Kuchava is three years old. Woohoo, so I wasn't too far off on my uh, my calculations. So she is still a very young leopard and this would be Tamba's older sister, uh, sister. And Tamba is a young male leopard that we also get to see in our traverse area. Uh, and we've actually been seeing it a lot with their mother, Tandi. Now, she's still, like we said, very, very young still for, <laughs> for a leopard and hopefully she'll have a very long life ahead of her. And I look forward to maybe spending some more time with her. She's been found on Chitu a few times and it always seems like she started pushing a little bit more onto this area while Tandi has been pushing a little bit more into, into Juma now that Karula has been gone. So there, I think that there's going to be a little bit of a shift in leopard's territory and hopefully um, it'll be a good one in the sense that we'll be able to include maybe some other leopards that we don't see as often. <coughs> Seems like it's been a fantastic cat day today. Don't, isn't, is today Wednesday? Don't they call today Wildlife Wednesday? <laughs> I think today has been a proper day. But while we try to perhaps find a new angle to see if maybe we can see her a little bit better, we're also going to go back to Jamie who's still hanging around with lions, but hanging around with lions in the dark.